For this project, you're going to need a cutting board, a needle tool or a toothpick. Here I'm going to use a serrated rib, some clay, a cup of water, and a brush that you don't mind getting dirty. All right, so we're going to start with a little lump of clay. And here I'm going to tear off just a small piece. I'm going to take this small piece and I'm going to roll it around in my hands until it forms a sphere. Once I've got a sphere, I'm going to place it on my cutting board and mash it in so that it's kind of like a pancake. But we don't want it to be too flat. We want it to have a little bit of thickness to it. Not like paper. All right, so once that part's done, that will be my base of my coil pot. Now I'm gonna tear off another small piece and begin to make a coil. You've probably made something like this with Play-Doh before. It's kind of like making a noodle or a snake. Here we're just making it with clay, but in clay it's called a coil. Once you have your coil, I'm gonna take my serrated rib, in your case, a toothpick, and you're gonna make some little crisscross marks on the edge of the base of your coil pot. In ceramics, this is called scoring. Once you've scored the edge of your base, move it over and grab your coil. Now score one side of your coil. Remember, you want crisscross marks. Once one whole side of your coil is covered in crisscross marks or has been scored, you're gonna take your brush and put a little bit of water right on top of those score marks. This is called slipping. Next, you're gonna do the same thing to your coil. Just add a little bit of water on top of those score marks. Then you're gonna turn your coil over so that the score marks are facing the base. Then you're gently gonna press it in to your base. If you have a little bit of piece hanging off, you can always tear it off. Now you have the beginnings of a coil pot. But we need more coils than just one. So here I'm gonna just start speeding up the process and I'm gonna make a coil, I'm gonna score it. I'm also going to score on top of the coil I added before it. In ceramics, anytime you wanna attach any two pieces of clay together, you always score and slip on both sides. So here I'm scoring and slipping on my coil and the coil before it. And you'll see me do this over and over again. Once you've scored and slipped a few coils on top of one another, you should have something that looks like this. You can go taller if you'd like, but this works just as well. Because this is air dry clay, you just have to let it sit out for a couple days so that it can dry. Next, if you're wanting to use salt dough, here's what you're gonna need. I grabbed my cutting board and my salt dough. Now, my salt dough was a bit old, so if yours is old, I would suggest that you add a lot of flour and some oil to your hands or they're gonna look like this Ooh! here I'm adding some oil to my fingers and more flour and I even add a few drops of oil to my salt dough and more flour once it's not so sticky I take the oil on my hands and use it to pick up flour on my hands Now I'm going to tear off a piece and just like before I'm going to roll it into a sphere. 
but this time I want to show you that you can make a coil pot any shape you want. It just depends on what you make the base shape. Here I've made my base a heart. So that means my coil pot is going to look like a heart. And the difference between salt dough and regular clay is salt dough is kind of mushy. It likes to bend and flop around. So in this case, you do not have to score, but I suggest that you slip it so that it makes it sticky so that the pieces stick together, kind of like glue. And then just like before, you'll turn the wet side of the coil to the wet side of the base and attach them. You'll repeat this step until you have as many coils as you'd like. Be aware that salt dough, because it's so flimsy, will likely start to collapse if it gets too tall. So because salt dough is not like clay, to set it, you have to stick it in the oven. I would ask for an adult's help to put it in the oven. When you bake it, set it to 250 degrees and keep it in there for two hours. Once it's done, you can paint it and decorate it as you'd like. I hope you enjoyed making a coil pot with me today and I'll see you next time.